Welcome to LeapFrog BI Academy course BD110, Dimensional Modeling Introduction. During this course, we're going to first introduce the concept of dimensional data modeling. And then second, we're going to spend a little bit of time and actually create a dimensional data model. So let's get started. What is a dimensional model? Well, to answer that question, I'm going to jump over to KimballGroup.com and introduce Ralph Kimball. So Ralph Kimball is uh, um, a very well-known um, inventor of many of the dimensional modeling design techniques. He's a thought leader in the space. He's authored many books. I would encourage everyone to go out and, and um, uh, possibly pick up his books, but at a very minimum, utilize the resources that are available here. There are, are design techniques. There's an um, active set of forums that you can go and get answers to, to um, questions well beyond what this brief introduction could ever hope to achieve. What I'm going to do is go over to the Kimball Core Concepts and use his definition of a dimensional model. So a dimensional model is it's a database design technique and it has two primary goals. Number one we want to create a structure that's easy to understand and navigate. And number two, we want that data structure to perform well. So very simply, we're creating a easy and fast data structure. So beyond that high level goal, what exactly are we creating? Well, we're creating facts and dimensions. Facts will be will be our tables that will contain measures such as uh, sales amounts. And our dimensions are going to contain the descriptors of those measures such as products or locations. It's a combination of these facts and, and dimensions that will create a star schema for example. With that basic knowledge right there we're going to just jump right in to creating a uh, simple dimensional data model. So the process would usually start by um, some business sponsor identifying a need. In this case, let's let's uh, let's just say that a VP of sales has come to us and said, "Hey, I really have some. Uh, I could really do better if I had certain information available to me." Uh, and it, what this we so we go out and we interview this VP of sales. And um, he tells us that he needs a better understanding of sales trends. Okay, that's, that's pretty simple. He says that he wants to know which products are doing well today. And were those same products doing well last year? Are we doing better or worse? He wants to understand the, the differences. Again, sort of a trend or a comparison. And then uh, he wants to be able to identify cycles. Are there certain times of year or certain events that happen that, that should be understood by the sales team? He wants to know if promotions are working. If so, uh, in what locations, or what products, um, when are they working, and so on. So we've brainstormed together here a little bit and we've created some, uh, some pretty simple um, uh, drawings of, of what reports might contain. Um, and this is what we're going to use as our starting point to figure out, well, what exactly is our dimensional model going to look like? What does it need to support? Well, we've said already that sales is, is what we're going to be talking about here. So that's, that's a fact. That's an amount. It's a, it's a sale amount, a dollar amount, or a quantity. And we can see that all of our charts are, are actually listing out sales or presenting sales values in some way. Now the descriptors of those sales are number one time, so we need sales trends, and uh, we've said we, well, we want products, so yeah we have products that we need to be able to uh, break our sales down into. We have location, that's another way we need to be able to break down sales, and then we have our scenarios or our promotions um, that we need to be able to break that information down by. So putting that all together, uh, we can pretty quickly determine 
that we need a data structure that is going to have a fact table with sales amounts and we need several dimensions. We need dates, we need products, locations, and we need promotions. So let's go look at the source system that contains the information that we're going to be um, using to create this data mart. To do that, I'm going to jump over to um, Management Studio real quick here. And we're going to be using AdventureWorks Sample Database as our source system today. So let's, um, let's first look at this data to see how, how uh, the data is structured today. Well, um, it's not, it, unless you, uh, many of you probably are, but unless you happen to be familiar with this, this application, AdventureWorks, that is compiling this information, it's maybe an ERP system, then it would take you a little bit of time to go through here and figure out where the data is actually um, housed or contained. But like most uh, systems, there's going to be some transaction level information here in the cell schema. We can see that we have a sales order header and a sales order um, uh, um, detail, which is going to contain our sales or transactions. So let's use that as our starting point for figuring out if we actually have the data we need here to support our data mark that we want to create. The way I like to do that is to uh, first, I usually just look at the fields that are listed here. I can see that yeah, we do have product information here. I can see that I have some, some dollar amounts, uh, some product information here. I have a special offer. That could be my promotion. Um, I don't see anything related to um, locations here, so I'm going to keep digging a little bit. I can see sales order header. If I look at that, that looks like it uh, does have some location information. So I can pretty quickly figure out that I'm going to be using a combination of these two tables to get what I need. So I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead and create a quick diagram here to see if I can quickly understand how this information is structured today. Not so much to figure out uh, you know how I'm going to actually structure it or, or transpose it to get into my data mart, but just more so to to ensure that the required information is actually here. So uh, I'm going to zoom to about 75% here. And so sales order header, let me look at the related tables of that guy. And I can see there are quite a few. And I'm going to go ahead and relay that out. Okay, so now I can see, yeah, this is getting to my sales territory. I've got customers. Um, and then when I go down to my detail, that's getting me over to here. So I'm going to expand this a little bit more. I'm going to add my related tables here. And I'm also going to add my related tables to my sales or territory. And I'm going to change this up a little bit so I can actually maybe see what's going on here. Show just the headers. Okay. So, I can see that my sales territory gets me to sales person. Okay, that's fine. Overall, I think I can be fairly confident now that, that this particular piece of information is going to get me what I want. It's going to take me a little bit of time to, to uh, reverse engineer this and figure out how to transpose it into my uh, data mart, but I do see all the information I need. I want to actually add one more table though, and that is I want some to make to take a closer look at my actual products because that was a a key um, piece of information that I needed. So here's product category. I'll just add that guy, and I'll add related tables to that subcategory, and then I'll add related tables to that product. Okay. Simplify this a little bit. Let's see what we have here. Uh, where did it go? Okay. So from special offers, that gets me out to products from there. So that that probably will work. I also noticed that down in my sales order detail, I did have a product ID, so I can probably go straight to product from there. Okay. So I've spent a couple minutes now. I I know what my requirements are. 
I know I need this information. I feel like even though I haven't gone through the process of completely creating a source to target map at this point, I feel like that my source systems do support these requirements. So I'm going to jump now to Visio and actually create a quick, simple uh, dimensional data model. And I'm going to do this using the built-in template for uh, database modeling diagrams. Uh, and I'm going to just simply create that to get me started. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit here. Oops. Sorry about that. Zoom back out. There we go. Okay. Now, turn some of this stuff off. Okay, there we go. I'm going to first start out by just creating my fact table. So I'm going to drag in a, a table here, and I'm going to call this my fact sales. And I like to do as little documentation as possible. So um, you may find that, that uh, the amount of um, documenting that I do here in modeling and, and throughout these different courses is more or less than you like to do. You have to find what works for you. But at a minimum, I believe that we do need to have, uh, I, I know that we do need to have a, a data model actually created because this is going to become the target of what our data mart is actually building. This is this is what we're trying to create. So I'm going to drag in a few more tables here and I'm going to give them some names. So this is going to be my uh, this will be our date dimension and this guy is going to be my product dimension. This one's going to be my uh, promotions and then this is going to be location. All right, so in, in my sales, I'm going to define a couple of columns here. First of all, I'm going to have a foreign key in sales, which is going to point to each of my dimensions. That's, that's pretty much a, uh, a known right off the bat. So I'm going to build those out. I'm going to create those fields. Uh, each of these fields are also going to participate in my primary key. So let's do it. Let's just call them um, uh, date. That's going to be primary key, product, and promotion, and location. All right. Now, I also know that um, there's a chance that I could have the same product sold on the same day, on the same promotion, in the same location. And um, I, I know that my part of my requirement was that I want to understand sales. And part of sales is quantity of sales, number of sales, not just the amount of sales. So both of those things together pretty much tell me right away that I'm going to need a degenerate uh, dimension here for my transaction ID. Now this, this is a degenerate dimension being that it is um, uh, at the same grain of the fact table or a very similar grain of the fact table. And there's no other, uh, um, uh, I guess, attributes that are needed. I'm going to place this actually into my fact table and use it as a degenerate. Now, each of my dimensions are going to have a surrogate key. Uh, so I can add those in right away. I'll just call that my ID. And those will serve as the primary key of each of my dimensions. So let me add those real quick. Okay, and finally, promotion. All right. Now, what I'm going to do next is just set up my relationships, all my foreign key relationships. So location, I'm going to drop that in here. I've got my relationship here. So from ID to my location foreign key. Now I can see that that is a foreign key. That's the way I want it. And I'm going to do the same thing for promotion. Here's my promotion. Great. Then I'm going to do the same thing for my date. And date. And finally, I'm going to have a foreign key out to product. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and 
and uh, add a couple of more things into my fact table. Um, and that is, I'm going to add the actual measures that I want to be sure to include. Uh, one thing I need to know is the discount amount. Um, and then I'm also going to want to have the net sale amount. Um, I guess I could go ahead and just add in the gross sale amount as well. Something like that. And those things may change, but I'm just simply putting in a placeholder here so that I know that I need to be able to describe not only the total transaction, but also the uh, discount that was applied. All right, so let's jump over to date. I usually don't do much with date here, but one thing I'm going to do on each of these dimensions is I'm going to put in the fields that are going to be the dimension key. So I'm just going to call this my date key. We'll talk more about that. I'm going to make it required. Um, and then for product ID, I'm going to put in my product key. Actually, product ID. Again, required. And these fields are our business keys. These are the ones that are coming in from the, the source system. Promotion, so let's just say promotion ID. Notice I'm not even worrying right now about making sure that these fields are exactly lining up with the source system fields. That will all come in time, but for now, I just want to create a dimensional model that supports the requirement. Okay, so now I'm, I'm just about done. I have my four dimensions that I know I need. If I, if I had a model created or a data mark created that was, that was just this simple, I would be able to support the requirements, answer the questions that the VP of Sales has asked to be answered. Uh, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to add a couple of attributes to each of these dimensions, like date. I'm just going to say I want to make sure I have a, a year, a month, and a day uh, attribute good enough. And then under product, I'm going to say, well, I want to have my... Um, my product name, maybe a description, and I also want to have a subcategory and a category. Okay, and under promotion, again, a name, a description, um, good enough, and then under location, Let's have um, a name, and then uh, what do we need? We need to have like a region in here as well, something like that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. There's a lot more to, to do here in this, in creating a dimensional model, uh, or a lot more possibilities. For example, we haven't um, defined which of these attributes or how these attributes are tracked across time, uh, slow changing dimension tracking. Um, we haven't done any, um, uh, taking care of any special situations like uh, fact lists or bridge tables or, or many different scenarios that could, that could come up. But this simple dimensional data model um, should at least give you a good idea about what needs to be in place before you begin developing a data mart. Thank you for your time. We'll see you in the next course.